think I'm gonna get started and maybe some people will roll in afterwards, but that's all right. Um, okay, so good morning. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, I'm gonna talk about content migration sort of from a non-development perspective. Um, do we have any developers here right now? Okay, good. Um, developers are definitely welcome, but uh, you know, that's good that you all will hopefully take a little more than, than, than that uh, from, from this. So, um, First of all, my name is Jesse. Uh, I've been with Evolving Web for about two, two and a half years. I'm a solutions architect and a team lead. Um, I have ten, about 10 years of, of, of development experience and experience with Evolving Web and um, working as a full stack developer and um, uh, on various open source platforms, including Drupal, of course. Um, I'm not a, a Drupal developer, though, and I work mostly on a higher level with our Drupal projects. Um, and who is uh, Evolving Web, uh, in case you don't know? So we are a, a full-stack digital agency. We're based in Montreal, in Canada. Um, we help our clients bring their digital experiences to life. Um, we like to set uh, meaningful stories in motion uh, and build platforms for them that are designed to grow for the, for the future. Um, so we've been working with Drupal for about 15 years, uh, actually maybe more at this point, 16. Um, we're about 80, 85 people spread out all across the globe. Um, and uh, we have designers, developers, uh, you name it, we probably have, have, uh, have, have somebody that does that, that job uh, on the web. Um, just a couple of, of, of clients that we've worked with, specifically when it comes to migration work. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about a couple of these. Um, just wanted to, to quickly show a few of those. Um, to dive in very quickly on a couple of the ones we've done that are relevant, uh, that I might touch on a couple of times throughout this session. Uh, we worked a bit with uh, the uh, Princeton um, uh, uh, SPIA uh, program, um, the School of Public Affairs, uh, and we worked with them on a, on a migration of their site to uh, from Drupal 7 to Drupal 9. Uh, but at the same time, we created a new, a whole new UX and redesigned the, the, the digital identity, also upgraded their integrations with the rest of the, the Princeton ecosystem. Um, we also worked with the province of Quebec, our home province, uh, on a tourism website for, for the province that sort of tracks all the different locations throughout the entire province. Uh, and that was a fairly big migration. We did about 100,000 uh, different sort of pages or entities into, into Drupal. Uh, and they all sort of helped to drive a really nice interactive map on, on that website. Um, so that was a great project and a big migration for us. So we've done quite a few migrations, um, and we want, want to just be able to like share how we do these migrations, share a lot about what we've learned, um, and, and how we do them. I mentioned I'm, I'm not a. Do you mind if I shut this? I'm sorry. I mentioned I'm not a Drupal developer, um, and so my involvement is a bit different on these migration projects. Uh, it's usually a lot more earlier on, planning phases. Uh, discovery, uh, helping along maybe some of the, the technical side of things, uh, but but not like on the development side. Um, and so uh, my goal is to kind of share what what we've learned uh, and, and how how we think that uh, the rest of the team, the non-development team, can really help with with these uh, these migration projects. Before we talk specifically about content migrations for Drupal, uh, I want to talk about another kind of migration human migrations. Um, I feel like we've been doing migrations throughout all of our existence. Um, we've done a lot over, over time. Uh, generally, the ideas have been the same, but it certainly changed how that works. Uh, myself, I recently moved uh, from Central Canada uh, all the way to Montreal to join the rest of our team there. Um, and for that, in that case, because we were, I was moving within the continent, it was actually pretty easy just to pack up all my stuff, put it in a big truck, and, and drive across the, the, the country. Um, so 25, roughly 100 kilometers over about four days in a U-Haul, just me and my wife driving across the country. It was, it was fun, but it was a lot of work. Um, we had about six months of this mess in our apartment uh, uh, back home, uh, organizing, planning, selling, packing, all that kind of stuff. And ultimately, we ended up keeping a lot more than we probably should have and ended up with a mess in our new house now, our new apartment. Um, so this is what we kind of moved into. Uh, it was a lot of work to get all this cleaned up after the fact. About the same time, one of our other colleagues moved from, uh, from France uh, to join us in, in Montreal. Uh, he obviously had to take a plane um, and couldn't take nearly as much stuff as what I took. Uh, so he had to really pare it all down, get rid of most of the stuff, 
bringing only what's really important and a couple of other things along with it too. Um, this is kind of what I assume his apartment looked like when he got into, into Montreal, um, not actually, but you know, looks, looks nice and clean. Uh, starting over. Um, planning this kind of a, of a migration is actually a lot easier uh, because you know, you're, you're going to just start over fresh and, and sort of rebuild from there. But the process itself might be more complicated. Um, having to basically buy everything brand new, set everything up again, that's a lot of work there as well. So I kind of feel like we have two different kinds of migrations that, that happen. We have the, the let's start over migration, um, and then we have the let's bring everything along with us migration. Um, and and there's, there's some complexities in each one, but neither is really incorrect. Uh, both of these are entirely valid ways to move. Um, and in fact, probably in a lot of our projects, we end up doing a little bit of each. It's not one or the other. Um, when I moved, it was pretty intentional that we you know, wanted to move, stay within Within the continent, we, we moved and brought all of our stuff with us. Um, but a larger change, like moving continents, is going to take a much more uh, bigger effort to start over fresh. Uh, but again, each one has its own sort of positives and negatives. The important thing is going to be to plan all of that. Um, otherwise, you don't really know what your intentions are, how you're going to act on it, and what you're going to do. So. You know you're doing this big migration, you know that you're either moving hundreds of kilometers or moving from Drupal 7 to Drupal 10, or maybe it's another CMS into Drupal. Uh, the, the planning kind of is, in general, going to be sort of the same. Um, even, even when we're uh, uh, physically moving and just can't decide uh, what to move, um, you can't just decide what to move, throw, or when to move, sorry, throw everything into boxes and go. You have to really plan it, make sure that we sort of figured everything out, know the, the full intention and are, and are really ready to go at that point. So we started at a, a really in-depth discovery phase. And this is really where I like to think of it as we can avoid all of our potential future issues at, at this point. Um, I really love this definition of, of what discovery is. It's from Wikipedia. Uh, basically just that it's the act of detecting something as new or something previously unrecognized as meaningful. And that's really what, what we're doing in, in our discovery phases. Um, the, the important thing is not to rush this phase. Uh, we will take the time. It, it might seem like you can just jump in and just start moving things and, and go ahead with your migration. But if you take the time to plan it, to discover everything that you're going to discover, especially on larger sites. I mentioned you know, 100,000 pages on one of, for one of our clients. Um, there's a lot that we're going to find that we didn't expect when just diving in and exploring and, and discovering. Um, we'll find all those cobwebs maybe of like old modules that we didn't know about or uh, designs that, that uh, are one-off designs or maybe it's uh, old um, or a, a single page app built in, uh, embedded in, in, a, in a Drupal um, uh, page. So we'll find all that through this process. Uh, and that's really important to, to, to spend that time to, to do that. We typically, throughout our discovery, we produce quite a few documents. Um, whether it be just you know, notes documents, more formalized technical specifications, a lot of spreadsheets, lots of spreadsheets. Um, and that's probably my, my favorite part. I'm going to show one a little bit later. Um, but really the idea is to document everything. If you don't, chances are it's not going to exist in the future. You're going to forget about it. It might as well not exist at that point. So that's one, one really important uh, takeaway, I think. So a, a big part of that is what do you have today on your current site within your current uh, uh, CMS? Um, how is it structured? What kind of content types, taxonomies do you have? Um, what kind of files are there? And that includes both media and PDF files, which is important to, to always consider. You know, websites tend to have a lot of those, especially if it's a, you know, been around for a long time. User accounts, um, views and blocks. Uh, redirects even. It's important to make sure that if we have old redirects, maybe from past migrations, that we continue to bring those forward. Um, and the list just kind of keeps going on. Uh, and so as maybe as designers, content editors, um, web, uh, webmasters, you probably know the website very, very well. Uh, and you'll be able to very easily identify what might be missing from a migration plan. Uh, for example, you didn't see web forms on that list. You probably have web forms on, on your site. I don't, I, I don't know that we have sites that we manage that don't have forms of some kind. So you know, making sure that you're, you're getting into that as the, some of the experts in at least some areas of, of your websites. 
Uh, I mentioned this before, but definitely don't underestimate this part of, of, of discovery. It's incredibly important. It's where you're really going to find what, uh, what you're going to miss and avoid future problems if you know it much, much earlier on. More often than not, at some point in this discovery phase, if you set out on this process to migrate to Drupal 10, uh, but didn't want to actually undertake, say, a redesign or something, uh, there's going to be a spot where maybe it's a good time to reconsider that. As you've sort of discovered everything throughout this process, um, there might be some cases where it does make sense just to migrate and not touch the overall um, information architecture, the uh, design, the uh, uh, components, but at this point, it's a really good time to really reevaluate if that is the right, uh, right way to go forward. We definitely have those cases where we've gone into a project and it was uh, the intention was just to upgrade, but we've we've had that those discussions throughout the discovery process and decided because of the sheer amount of changes we're going to have to make, this is the right time to do a bit of a content refresh, design refresh, fix some accessibility issues, maybe uh, some other uh, issues at that point as well. So that's uh, um, this is the right time in discovery to, to start thinking about that. And then it comes time for the big cleanup. Uh, this is that, you know, cleaning up all those packing boxes and getting ready, getting our content in, in shape, uh, knowing basically um, what it is that, that we're going to bring along. Uh, one of my colleagues once said that uh, you don't need to QA things that you don't migrate. I think that that's a really important thing to consider. Uh, a lot of extra work later if you brought a lot of stuff over that you don't need to, a lot of stuff to unpack. So when you're cleaning up, you really want to think about what, what do you want to keep, what do you want to merge, and then what do you want to maybe trash or just completely rewrite. And it's important to think about, or it's just as important to think about what you don't want to keep. Things like comments, revisions, moderation statuses, old events, old news. Um, thinking about that as well is, is just as important because again, it's going to reduce the whole process later on. So once we sort of know what we have and what we're doing with it all, um, now it's really time to think about how we're going to move things over into the new site. We haven't really, haven't really talked about the new site much. That's not really going to be the, the focus. Um, but at this point, let's just assume that you sort of have some of the content model set out. Uh, you sort of know what you're keeping. Um, so this is our chance to start to add some, some, some structure into maybe what was previously a bit chaotic in, in, in an old CMS. So maybe we want to add some missing structure. Maybe there's groups of content that uh, were organized in a, a single content type, but really should be separated out to help create some structure there. Uh, maybe there's, uh, we need to start mapping out how the old content is going to come into the, the new content types. Uh, maybe there's unstructured pages that have, that really should be much more structured to add some more meaning to that data. And we can start mapping that into new custom fields in the, in the back end. Maybe we have some of those hard-coded components in the WYSIWYG editor uh, that should transition into new blocks or new paragraph types. There might also be some old custom fields um, that we need to actually just migrate as is, and, and that's great. That'll make things a lot, a lot more simpler. Uh, we might have some, some keyword or maybe text fields uh, that actually should be translated into taxonomies at this point. Uh, so that would be, this is the, the right time to start thinking about that. So that kind of keeps going on and on. There's a whole bunch of different things that we need to look at at this point. We track this all in a pretty big spreadsheet. Uh, we call it a data transfer table. Um, it's really just a big spreadsheet with a whole bunch of tabs, as you can see along the bottom there, for each node type, for each taxonomy, blocks, views, etc. We just track sort of everything that we possibly can and try to map where the source data is coming from and where it's going to. Um, that kind of gets a bit more into some of the, the technical sides of it. Uh, that is probably going to end up involving information architecture specialists, even the developers at this point. But it's really good to start really thinking about all of this, how things are moving along and, and where, it's, where it's going to. Uh, so we track this all, even on, on simpler migrations, because it's just nice to have that all documented out. We know our field types. We know what we're coming from and going to. Uh, so even on simple sites, there's still a lot of value in, in documenting all of this. So once we have this huge list, it's really good to start thinking about now, what is our strategy going to be? Is it going to be that automated migration or a more manual approach? Um, how are we going to migrate basically all that content? 
Automated migrations are really good if you have large amounts of data, you know, 10 years worth of, worth of news posts, for example. Uh, if your structured data, if the data at the source is very structured, that's going to make it easier. Um, so that's a, a, a good uh, option for automated uh, migrations. And the frequency of the changes, I'll talk a bit more about that, why that's important later, but um, as we're migrating, we want to be able to probably refresh that content. If content's changing constantly, it's easier if it's automated to just pull that, pull, pull that new content in later. What's good for manual migrations? Um, if there is content that really needs a refresh, maybe that's just a complete rewrite. Uh, there's no need to pull that over uh, into the new platform and then rewrite it there. Uh, maybe it's just that, um, you know, it's just best just to rewrite it on the, on the new platform and not worry about migrating it at all. Smaller buckets of content, uh, maybe there's a, you know, landing pages that's just a couple of them in there. There's no, no need to set up automation uh, steps to pull over that, that, uh, that, that small amount of content. And something that's highly unstructured might not make sense to, to, auto, to automatically migrate. Um, there might be some cases where it does, but in some cases it's, it's easier just to, to pull it over manually. All right, so now we're ready. We're gonna start uh, actually testing out some of the migration processes. Um, you plan it all out and you know where you're going, uh, you know how it's gonna, gonna happen. Um, it's gonna look a little bit different depending on the actual strategy, um, but it's now time to, to move everything. Uh, if you don't have somebody that can help, of course we know some people that can. Um, but let's assume that you do have some developers and they're gonna probably hand over or, or handle most of the, the hard work on, on, on this phase. They're gonna do all of their um, ETL processes, they're gonna do the raving their, their magic wand over everything uh, to make it all work smoothly for you. Uh, but really what they're doing is not actually magic. They're doing a lot of work behind the scenes to uh, building uh, migration scripts, testing that, pulling data from the original source, transforming things into new ways, uh, pushing things into the, the new platform. Uh, they're doing a lot to basically get this process streamlined. Um, they, or at least we typically, will do this in a way that we can rerun these migrations over and over again uh, throughout the whole process. And that's basically so that we can uh, tweak the process. If we need to add some new rules to what we're doing, we need to, to tweak the, the, the data sources maybe, make changes to it, we can rerun it over and over again. Um, but that's for developers, uh, and that's not you know, what, what we're talking about. So I wanted to go cover a little bit about basically what the expectation should be for the non-developers. Um, so let's look, look at what that whole process looks like. This is kind of maybe what a typical migration might look like, right? We do the content migration, maybe do a little bit of testing, and then we launch the new site. Um, well, maybe that's not quite actually right, because we do the migration, we do a bunch of testing, we iterate on that migration process, change the scripts, um, do some more testing, and then at that point, we're ready to launch. This is usually when we'll find a lot of those issues, like that module or that, that was abandoned two years ago, or those embedded widgets or scripts and styles in, in, in some of our content. Um, all of that's probably going to need some discussions uh, to figure out the best place forward. Uh, but at that point, we've done all that, and, and we're ready to go. Um, still not quite, maybe. It's more like this. We actually then have to have a more of a testing phase um, that goes more with the, 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 what we call user acceptance testing. Um, and that's usually involving, maybe it's folks like yourselves, the people that are involved more on the content side, the designers even, uh, the, the non-developers basically, the people that actually know the content best. Um, so that's what I want to go through. Uh, basically what it is that, that we need to, to test at that point and, and what your jobs might be. Um, so the first one might be some content fixes. Uh, there might be some, some needs to create some redirect maps. We'll talk a little about that as well. Uh, and then the actual user acceptance, user acceptance testing. Uh, and then doing it all over again because this process is a little, can be a little bit iterative when you're dealing with large amounts of content that maybe haven't been touched for a while. So content fixes. Um, as the developers are running through all of their tests, they're probably gonna find a bunch of, of, of old content, a bunch of issues that, the content that doesn't conform to maybe a more recent standard. They'll wanna come back and maybe make some of those fixes either in their processes or at the, at the source uh, of, of the content, so your, your source site. Uh, one of the things that we've found is it's typically better to try to fix that in the source, if you can. You can't always, but in cases where you can, it's gonna help, first of all, free up the developers to focus on a lot of the larger issues that, that maybe need more development work. 
Uh, but it also allows for that easier rerunning of those migrations so that we can rerun it all the time. And even up to that, that final launch date, we can rerun that migration and refresh all that content uh, just by pulling it all over. And nothing has to happen on the destination, and there was time saved on the development team in, in the process. Uh, so fixing that at the source is gonna, gonna help to, to create that more, more streamlined process. The redirects mapping, um, generally when you're doing this type of a migration, you're probably gonna have a lot of changes to the URL structure, and that's usually a good thing. These changes are probably happening for the better. Um, but it's only gonna be a good thing if you uh, redirect everything. Uh, you don't want old, uh, old bookmarks not working. Um, you don't wanna have a hit to your SEO just because you no longer, content's no longer reachable at certain URLs. So at this point, it's, it's a good time to start thinking about that and how you're going to map everything to your, uh, from your old URLs to your new structure. It's probably going to involve some help from the developers to know how they're setting up the content types and what the new structure looks like. Uh, and there's ways that they can also help to create uh, what we call a wildcard redirect or maybe a, a whole URL structure that, that uh, can match hundreds or thousands of, of, of URLs can be created with just one rule. So they can, they can help with that. Um, but for all the other ones, maybe it's PDF files, maybe it's uh, all of the you know, certain uh, landing pages, you might need to start creating one more of those spreadsheets to map your source URLs to your destination URLs. At this point, it's also a good thing to consider if you have access to something like the Google Search Console. Um, it's going to be really important later, but at this point, uh, it can actually take a lot of time to build up some data. Uh, and it'll help you to validate some of these redirects, some of the content issues later on. But if you haven't set it up beforehand, you might, you might not have the right data later. So if we're thinking earlier in the process, this is a good time to, to set that up. Make sure you have the Google Search Console. Also, Bing has a webmaster tools as well. Most of the major search engines will have a similar tool that's going to be useful later. So I've covered this a couple of times, but I just want to again state that you know, it's good to have migrations that are repeatable, the whole process. Uh, when we're talking about automatic migrations, repeating it just allows for refreshing that content, um, uh, pulling it all over, and, and right up until the actual launch date. When you're launching that new content on that new site, you want to pull over the latest content, and by, by fixing it all at the source, and then having this repeatable migration, process, it can be done right up to, to the launch date and know that it's going to be uh, uh, very easy to refresh that content. It's important to also start trial runs as soon as you can in the process. I think that that's, uh, it's going to leave a lot of time to figure out some of these edge cases that maybe we didn't consider. Um, so as soon as you're able to start that, it might require a lot of, of, of work on the new site to set up the content types except the overall structure, maybe some design work and development work has to happen. But once you're ready to, to, to start, um, start trial, try, trying it out. Make sure that it's running smoothly. Make sure that there's nothing that's, that's gonna come up. And start testing, because you'll probably find some, some, uh, some more skeletons in there that you need to, to deal with. Last thing throughout this process um, is to start thinking about your test plan. Because when your actual site launches, you're going to want to have a plan to actually test it and make sure that it's all good to go. Um, you probably want to get some additional resources in that, uh, get a list of content that, that's, that's good to, to, to use to test, uh, and work with the dev team maybe to identify key templates that you'll need to test and other uh, key items that are, that are ready to test. So this is your time really to start getting all that kind of stuff ready. Um, because now it's time to actually start the testing. So let's say you're back in that, that nice pristine loft with all of your, your, your stuff that you've brought over. Uh, now it's time to figure out, does everything actually fit? Did it fit in the right spot? Uh, where should it go? Making sure that nothing was actually left behind. So this is when we get into actual, the, the actual testing now. Um, as I mentioned, you know, the, the, the developers aren't the primary sort of knowledge holders of your site, right? So the people that are, which might be, be, be you, are the ones that should actually be, be looking at the content and testing it and make sure that things are all in the right place. Um, the designers, the content editors, the project managers. In the case, in the case of some of our migrations with those you know, 100,000 pieces of content, uh, it's hard to know what to check. You can't check all of those. Um, so there's, it's, it's key to consider in that process what you're gonna maybe spot check, identifying what pages are important 
uh, what templates, what features should be tested. Uh, and this should all be considered throughout the, the, the or, or factored in with the earlier parts of the process. There's also a lot of automation that can happen when it comes to testing. That's of course not, that's more of a development thing, but it's important to keep that in mind and, and maybe talk to the developers about that. What kind of tools that can they use to automate some of the testing processes? Um, you're certainly not going to be able to test all 100,000 pages and looking at even just a snapshot of those isn't, isn't going to always uncover all the, the possible uh, issues. But what we can do is actually prioritize some pages. Um, I'm going to bet everyone probably has a type of analytics platform installed on their website. Uh, I don't think there's really many sites that, that don't these days. And that's going to be really valuable data to figure out what are the high traffic pages, which one should we test, um, and just knowing what to, what to focus on within those, uh, that, that content. So what is it that we actually are testing when we're looking at pages? We want to make sure, of course, that all the content itself is migrated. Uh, and that includes things like uh, images and files and the links to all those images and files. There's also translations. We want to make sure that all of those are, are, are came across correctly if you have a multilingual website. Uh, any other references like content relationships and taxonomies. Uh, anything that might have been transformed throughout the process if your dev team had to maybe extract some data uh, in some non-conventional way and, and, and transform it and then push it into the new site. Make sure that that's something that is important to, to double check. Layout and visual items, uh, those redirects that we talked about earlier, making sure those are all working once they're implemented. Uh, links to anything, whether they be internal or external. Uh, any metadata for SEO, like keywords, uh, descriptions, titles. Uh, and there's, the list could just keep going on. There's a lot of other things to, to look at there. Um, but one thing to consider at, at some point, too, is, is it good enough? There's probably some 10-year-old you know, news articles that really don't get much traffic that maybe are a little bit not quite visually there just yet. Um, it's, it's probably not going to be possible to get all of those the right uh, setup correctly all within your automated migration. So at some point, you do have to really consider, this might be good enough. It's OK if this old article doesn't look quite right. Um, the new ones are going to look great, and that's, that's important. Um, but again, looking back at that data, you might know that the analytics show some of these articles are important, and you want to manually fix some of those. So that's, that's uh, you know, part of the process to identify what falls into that bucket. All right, so now it's moving day. Everything's packed, ready to go. Um, you're ready to, to, to hit the road. What's actually going to be involved in that? Well, really, it should probably actually be a non-event. There's really not too much to do in, in theory. Um, assuming everything was planned and tested and ran and re-ran and everything happened as, as, as it should, you should just be able to sit back and let the team do their work and the launch will happen nice and smoothly. And that really should, should be the, the end of it. It should happen pretty seamlessly. Um, but this is also where your test plan comes into place. You have to verify all of that, making sure things are working, everything is as it should be. Um, and now we have come back to the monitoring as well. This is probably going to be the most important part of the next days, weeks, and even months. Um, even you know, a year down the line, you might still want to keep an eye on some of this uh, because uh, chances are there's more than, than, than uh, just the migration changes uh, happening on the site. So you want to keep track of, of, of what happened after the fact. And that's where our search console comes into play. Um, so this is going to have various spots. There's a whole bunch of tools in there that there's no way we could cover. Uh, but that are going to show you things like uh, maybe redirect chains, where one page redirects 10 times to get to its final page. Uh, missing uh, uh, URLs maybe you missed a redirect for. Um, maybe it'll find some issues on some pages that are much slower than they used to be. There's a whole bunch of tools that are going to be valuable in there. Uh, and I'd recommend continuing to check there over the, the coming days and weeks and months after your migration because it's going to keep finding new things. Um, unfortunately, uh, some of these search engines don't, you know, they're not going to be, be, there's no way to tell it just to crawl the whole site all over again on this day. It's going to take time to do that. It's going to keep surfacing new issues as it's doing that throughout the, the coming days and weeks and months. So keep checking regularly. There's a lot to get into, and most of those fixes might end up involving your development team, um, but that's, that's okay. They'll, you know, they're, hopefully they're there to support you through, through some of those. 
And there is some way that we can sort of try to influence, uh, specifically Google, uh, to recrawl your website. If you resubmit your sitemap to Google, it'll probably, maybe, uh, ask them kindly to uh, recrawl the site, and, and that might help to trigger to find some of those issues uh, quicker than just waiting for it to happen organically. Um, so you can do that on launch day and hope that that'll, that'll help to give you some data in the coming uh, days. I would say it probably takes at least a couple of days to start seeing any useful data, but you know, give us some time and, and see what comes up, checking in frequently. Uh, once you've maybe found, say, there's a, a set of redirects that aren't working, you fix those, you can validate them in the uh, Search Console as well, just as a validation function. That'll then tell you if that issue was then fixed. So. That's really it. Congratulations, the migration's done, and everything is good and ready, and, and you are on Drupal 10, and everything's nice and new and shiny. Um, so what did we learn throughout that process? Uh, I think mostly, don't ever move. Um, it's, uh, it's a bit of a disaster, and it takes a long time to clean up if you don't prepare properly. But uh, besides that, I would just say, don't underestimate um, the, the discovery phase. There's a lot in there that will come out of it. Uh, so thank you. Uh, we have a couple of other uh, sessions today from Evolving Web from uh, uh, one of, a couple of my colleagues, Nikolai, who's doing a session on CK Editor. It's quite technical. Uh, and then Robert, who's doing a session with SDCs and Drupal 10. Uh, so don't miss those two. Um, yeah, is there any questions? Nothing. Well, we have a table out in the sponsored section. Uh, I'll be hanging around if anybody wants to chat or learn more or just uh, ask another questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.